2023 was a really interesting year for the Doom franchise. A spin-off mobile game based on Eternal's mini collectibles was launched back in March. We actually got an update for Eternal that removed the anti-cheat features. The franchise has just started to celebrate its 30th anniversary, and we saw new crossovers with Fall Guys, Call of Duty, Mountain Dew, Doritos, and a lawnmower brand throughout the year. Additionally, Quake 2 was finally remastered and brought over to modern consoles in August, and various add-ons for the classic games have been released alongside some other smaller things like the recent Slayer's Club reboot. The general lack of substantial content may have some of you questioning the future of the franchise and the direction that it's currently going, but I personally believe that 2024 will be a great year for the Doom community and id Software fans in general. One of the most interesting things we have going into the new year is confirmation that more developer livestreams are on the way, signifying that an influx of community-focused content is right around the corner. During the most recent QuakeCon, id Software debuted a continuation of the Doom Eternal dev streams, this time going by the name of Slayer's Club Live with Hugo Martin. Community manager Joshua Boyle and game director Hugo Martin were joined by a variety of guests to discuss the legacy of Quake 2 and the release of its remaster during the first episode. Although it wouldn't be solidified as a reoccurring series until the second episode was hosted on December 11th to celebrate the Doom franchise's 30th anniversary. The stream featured a variety of merch giveaways and smaller announcements such as the console ports of Sigil 2, but one of the more exciting reveals was the confirmation that the Slayer's Club Live series would keep going in 2024 due to the popularity of the previous streams. They now have a dedicated streaming room that they'll be using to host these episodes, which they wouldn't have if they didn't plan on doing a high number of streams as the year goes on. The next few episodes will likely be more laid back with a big focus on podcast style discussions and smaller reveals, but the upcoming Doom content will certainly make things much more exciting. We know for a fact that the Slayer Club itself will be getting more updates in the near future. Another update was confirmed during the most recent death stream and they previously promised more community content and club rewards to replace the exclusive skins they recently removed from the site. Judging by the complete removal of Doom Eternal's marketing from every corner of a club, it's safe to assume that all of the recent changes and upcoming content is in preparation for their next big game. Statements made during interviews and livestreams around Tag 2's launch suggested that a new project was in the very early stages of development at the time, and job listings published during late 2021 indicated that things were in full swing by the time Update 6.66 finally released. Now that they've had a few years to work on the next game, it's not entirely unrealistic to expect some sort of reveal later this year during one of Microsoft's big events. Based on how things have gone in the past, the ideal situation would be an announcement trailer during the Xbox Summer Showcase in June, and a full gameplay reveal at QuakeCon in August. But that's definitely not guaranteed. There was no chance of seeing a reveal in 2022, and there was barely even a chance in 2023. I think this year may be the first time that a reveal is actually in the cards, although I still wouldn't bet on anything. As for what the game will end up being, I personally think the obvious answer is a new Quake. Even if we put developer statements aside, the ending of Tag 2 concluded the current Doom storyline and put the franchise at the perfect stopping point. Its Software has a lot of respect for their games and would never put an end to a story that they plan on revisiting shortly after. I firmly believe that Doom will be taking a break for the foreseeable future and that Quake will be taking its place. If the game gets revealed this year, I'm sure that we'll start seeing even more content for the Quake games that have already been released. While we can definitely expect to see more add-ons for classic Doom and Quake, the amount will likely increase for the Quake remasters as the hype starts to build for the next title. Quake 2 unfortunately doesn't have a very high chance of getting more content regardless of what happens, but the original Quake and Champions are pretty much guaranteed to get even more updates throughout the year. Even if Quake ends up being the next at software project, Doom will continue on through small bits of official content and various crossovers. The franchise has made its way into other products pretty consistently throughout the past four years, and I can't see that changing anytime soon. My only prediction for Doom crossovers in 2024 is an official partnership with the incredibly popular trading card game Magic the Gathering. I know they've been doing tons of crossovers recently, and it just makes sense in a strange way. That sort of stuff won't happen too often though, so it seems like our main source of Doom content outside of death streams and community expansions will be updates for the official Doom mobile game, although it won't be exclusive to mobile devices for much longer. According to the App Store, Mighty Doom will soon be playable on PC through the Google Play game services, meaning that even more of you will be able to enjoy this free game in the near future. You cannot currently install the game despite what the store claims, but I'm assuming that will be changing very soon. We'll also be getting some pretty cool content alongside the PC version. A recent community survey was released asking players what they wanted to see in future updates, and that list of content included a co-op mode, a time trials mode, a level builder, a horde mode, and deathmatch, all of which are things that the community has been begging for. Regardless of your opinion on Mighty Doom, you seriously can't deny that it would be incredible to finally have another Doom game with co-op, deathmatch, and a level builder, even if it is content for a mobile game and not a full AAA title. The Hellguard boss from Doom 2016 was just introduced as a new enemy in the game's most recent winter-themed update, where you'll be fighting through snow-covered arenas in an attempt to stay warm and defeat the Yeti. 
It's a strange but fun take on one of 2016's most unique enemies. I'm sure we'll see the regular version added as a full boss fight in a later chapter. They've also started to step up their game with the cosmetics. The new pass offers 6 icy weapon skins, a frozen paint scheme for the mini slayer, and a premium ice axe model swap for the sentinel hammer, which is actually a free reward for those that reach tier 30 on the season 10 battle pass. With Mighty Doom's 1 year anniversary coming up in about 3 months, it's not too outlandish to expect the overall quality of these updates to continue to increase. A huge update with all of the content the community has been asking for would be the perfect way to celebrate, and I'd like to assume that Alpha Dog probably agrees with that sentiment. Doom's 30th anniversary will undoubtedly lead to some pretty great content for one of gaming's most iconic franchises. Developer livestreams, exclusive club rewards, new crossovers, a level builder, and various multiplayer modes may only be the tip of the iceberg, now that a reveal for their next big project is finally in the cards. While this may come as a huge surprise, leakers have recently claimed that id Software's upcoming game won't be Doom or Quake, but instead a licensed game set in the Star Wars universe. Click on the video that's on screen now to learn more. Thank you all so much for watching today's video, I hope you enjoyed it. That's pretty much all that I have for now though, until next time.